Hey you and welcome, my name is Mike, and in this little video I'm telling a story that takes us all the way to Utah to talk about a retired university professor. He done taught at Brigham Young University. That university just keeps coming up again and again. Wonder why? But Arabucco, he was just a grand old lad, he was a well-liked, you know, professor who now was living a good life, he was chilling with his bunker and his prepper stash and his survivalism. That was all good though, until there was a home invasion. Now this story, it's quite reminiscent of a lot of the other stories I've talked about. It's like you took all of them and put them into a blender. You'll get this one. You got a home invasion, you got people at the scene, you got people allegedly tied up and being told a certain story, and then you kind of got, eh. Well, what I mean by that is, they may, they may as well have said the dog did it because the police probably would have found that more believable. That's the whole madness of this case. It's unbelievable, but it happened. So, let's give it a go. So, to begin. You just know this is gonna be a nut bar of a case. So let's begin with the where, because I know so many of you only tune in for my geography lessons. Payson, Utah, more like pay me, is home for this old video. It's home to approximately 20,000 people, lying south of Provo and Salt Lake City itself. It was also home to a brilliant retired professor by the name of Kay Mortensen. His home though, hmm, it's kind of a son of a bitch because home means something different you know, to everyone, right? To some people, you know, wherever I lay my hat, you know what I mean? Other people, they just like to float like a, like a leaf on the wind, wherever they go. Some people, they don't want a home, they don't have a home, they, home means nothing to them, while others, it's where they can truly be themselves. And it can be their fortress. My shit is my shit and you can pry it out of my cold, dead hands. Kay Mortensen was one of them. Also a poor choice of words because maybe some folk would take him up on that. Kay Mortensen was a survivalist, which meant for him, if I have to kill you to survive, then you better get your boots on. He did not mess around. Kay was a black belt in karate. He had guns, guns, guns in every room of his house, including his car too. For little girls, it's you know, a teddy bear. For Kay Mortensen, he had his emotional support shotgun, which does, that sounds pretty cool to be honest. He had his own bunker filled with bunker shit, cans, water, more guns. Kay and his wife Darla were ready for the nuclear apocalypse, civil war, a pandemic. Oh, shit, he's, he's right on that one. All of which he was sure were, were coming, so he was lock and load. Funnily enough, in this day and age, it does not seem so ridiculous. But I guess you probably would have been quite surprised that the currency of the dystopian future would be toilet paper. He was a bit of a radical, but like not in the in the cowabunga type of way. More in like more in like the way he might actually murder somebody someday. Didn't keep his opinions to himself and was rather frugal, which is odd because he was wealthy. Hey, I mean if you really believe, you know, the end of the world, the apocalypse is coming. Being frugal and hey, come on, smoke him if you got him, right? But Darla, his wife, wasn't too keen on all this business. She accepted it, getting ready for whatever. That was his, you know, tinkering with vintage cars, and she she softened his edges a little bit. Darla and Kay met late in life after both had raised families of their own. Kay, he had three grown children, two of whom lived away, but the oldest son, Roger, and his wife Pam still lived close to Kay. Roger and Kay, they were close. Roger had suffered a brain injury years back and so was on disability. Kay was retired, so they spent a lot of time together. And Kay was worth millions through investments he had made over the years. He had a successful career teaching courses in manufacturing design, engineering technology, and mechanical technology, professing at Brigham Young for well over three decades. And he was a well-liked teacher who didn't recite from the book, but he told stories and he got his students excited and interested. He was also very dedicated to his church, and he had been on various missions spreading the word. On the evening of November 16th, 2009, this call, this 911 call was made. What's the emergency? Uh, 
father's and which two held hostage. Who held you hostage? We don't know. Okay, the, the guy that had the gun, what did he look like? Was he white guy, black guy, Hispanic? Um, I don't know. How many were there? How many guys were there? Um, there could have been. Were they white, black, Hispanic? Two white. Three white males. Okay, but how? Two, two white males. Two white males? That call, it was made from Kay's house. Now, now Darla, his wife, she was out. She was out of town at the time. She was, she was with her granddaughters. But it wasn't Kay who made the call. Hi, this is, we, we have the police on the way to help you there. Are you sure your dad's, your dad's cold to the touch? Yes, okay. Please go over to the police monitor. Sliced his throat. It was Roger on the line reporting that Kay was dead. His his throat had been cut from ear to ear by someone. Roger and Pam were at the house with the dead Kay, and they had a very weird story to tell. They had driven over to Kay's house to drop off a pie. They were going to give give Kay a pie. He was a big old fan. He was a monster for, for the pecan pies. You know what I mean? So they rocked up. They saw somebody, a stranger's car in the driveway, but they said, all right. Knock, knock, knock on the door. A stranger opened the door to Roger and Pam. They said, is Kay, is he in the house? This guy said, yeah, he is. Come on in, you know. They walked into the house, at which point this guy who opened the door, he pulled a gun on him, and then another man walked out with zip ties. Their wrists and ankles were zip-tied by these gunmen who told Roger and Anne, now you've seen our faces, you have to die. Then a very peculiar thing happened. These two men, they walked out of the room, presumably to get their guns, and Roger, he started praying. He started praying out loud. When these two men walked back into the room, Roger stopped praying, presumably ready to meet his maker. But the guy said, no, keep praying. Finish, finish your prayer. These two gunmen, they kind of crossed their hands, they bowed their heads to, along with, with Roger's prayer. And then when he finished, they said, we've changed our minds. We're not going to kill you. We're not going to kill you. We're going to let you go. But we have a story to tell you and you better tell this exact same story to the police. The story was this. Tell the police that three men broke into Kay's house and bound you, not two. And tell them that the three men were black men. Um, not these white men. And then if you tell the police that, you know, that's the story to stick to. And they, they took Roger's driver's license and said, if we find out, you know, you didn't tell the police this exact script, we know where you live. That's what Roger and Pam told the police happened. Wow. What a great story. Now listen up folks, I'm telling you this story, the mystery of what happened to Kay Mortensen and the story his son told about some... Quite frankly, some some unbelievably scary people. His story, you know, it, it sounded kind of stinky. But you know what isn't stinky? The real scary people who are on the internet. I have a lot of sleepless nights, my friends, thinking to myself, are my viewers okay on the web? What if they can't access this content in their location? What if they're being tracked on the web? What if they're not using NordVPN? Well, you should be. NordVPN is the online service keeping you safe on the World Wide Web. With a single click, your IP address is hidden and you can be in any country you want to be. Check it out. With one click, I'm in South Korea. Wow, it's just like it. Can't access this content in your location? Well, no you can. And with my special link, that is nordvpn.com slash that chapter, you can get a special deal that is just for you. Use my link to get an exclusive NordVPN deal, an incredible discount, and one month for absolutely free. Nord takes care of everything, and let's not forget to mention NordVPN's threat protection. With threat protection, you are safer than ever before against malicious websites, those dang dirty websites, pop-up ads, no more, and trackers, I'm good, thanks. No one's messing with you now, so put on your shades and pop your collar. Kind of funny, I think the height of coolness is a popped collar. It is pretty cool. So once again, use my link that is down in the description, that is nordvpn.com slash that chapter to get a deal that is just for you. Thank you so much, best friend NordVPN. Now let's get back into the video. 
After the men left, they undid their bounds, found Kay upstairs, and called the cops, who hauled ass over. This story was, um, bullshit, it kind of sounds. You know, it, it has, it has what the French call a je ne sais quoi, which is French for I don't know what, because I don't know what kind of story this is. They told that they assumed people would believe it. It sounds ridiculous. So these two guys break in. They slit the throat of an elder, elderly man, very viciously and brutally, slit his throat ear to ear. It's pretty hardcore. Vicious. Then when these two other people rock up, they just simply bind them. We're gonna kill them, but are somehow the praying. <sighs> Too much. So they were hardcore enough to viciously brutal and brutally murder an old man. They forced him to, K. Mortensen, they forced him to kneel over a bathtub and slit his throat like they're collecting his blood like a pig in a bucket. But then, praying, praying stopped them from killing Roger and Pam. And then they were like, well, this has been swell. See you later. It wasn't us, remember? Oh. What? God bless you, because I don't think anybody's going to believe you. The police certainly didn't. And let me, let me tell you, you know, our... Are we on Broadway? Because you can say, you know, say it with me now. So, so staged was exactly what the police thought when they were wandering around Kay's house. It didn't look like this kind of weird home invasion at all. Kay had weapons everywhere, and from the sounds of it, he was itching to use them. A home invasion would have been his lucky day, but he didn't get a chance to use his weapons. Almost like he knew whoever did this. What happened to Kay? People dragging him upstairs, making him kneel over his own bathtub, and slitting and stabbing his throat, it's vicious and personal. And guns were stolen from the house. Now Kay, he had around a hundred weapons, but the only guns stolen were the ones he kept in the bunker. And they were the lock and load everyday guns, not really worth a whole lot. But Kay kept in his house valuable collector's edition, Pokemon card style, you know, very expensive guns that would fetch quite a lot. They weren't stolen. Either the intruders were unaware, or they wanted to make it look like a robbery, but didn't actually want to lose the valuable things. Hmm. Now, a number of tips they come in, but it all went nowhere. This person may have had a grudge, this person owed money, this person stole guns. All these led nowhere, alibis of the wazoo. Nope, it kept coming back to Roger and Pam. At the front door, my wife was holding a pie right here. She either knocked on the door or rang the doorbell. I believe she knocked on the door. I had this door open okay. because I knocked on the wooden door. I didn't ring the doorbell. And I said, is Kay here? They proceeded to say he is and said he was upstairs and they let us in. The other guy shut the door. I turned around to look. Somebody was walking down the stairs with a gun in their hand. He pointed at us and said, you're here at the wrong time. Put out your hands. I took the knife and I cut my wire tie and I cut my wife's wire tie. I said, stay here, I'll see if their car is gone. And I got up and I walked up these steps and looked out the window to where the vehicle was parked and it was now gone. I came back downstairs and, I, and my wife was talking at the time to 911 dispatch. And I said, he is dead. A Roger and Pam who didn't seem at all frazzled by like what happened to them. And when they were questioned, they couldn't even tell the same story at all. They kept getting, ooh, uh, no, maybe it went like this. Ooh, wait, actually, sorry, no. My name's Eric Knudsen, by the way. I'm Pam. He's a contagious old fart and set his mouth to everybody. And they had blue fuzzy gloves. It looked like women's winter driving gloves or something. The fuzzy kind. They had, I know they had purple gloves on them. Purple. You know, Quite frankly, I think the story is a bunch of crap. I think the story is a bunch of crap that you and Roger have come up with. Okay. So you don't believe? But... I'm trying to. Does it sound too rehearsed? Or yeah. Okay. Is your husband capable of killing somebody? I need to get a drink. I wouldn't hope. I mean, I wouldn't think he is. I wouldn't think that he's capable of killing. His father? When the police did a search of Roger and Pam's home, they found a lot of unpaid bills. Motive. Not sole beneficiary, but I get a big share of my dad's millions too. I know we're in a lot of debt, but we, I personally, would not have my father in law killed for his money. 
The attack, personal, and it seemed like someone with intimate knowledge of the house did it. Kay protected his house like a guard dog. It must have been someone who knew him who got in. And they seemed like it was a story they rehearsed, but kept mixing up the details. I came back downstairs and, I, and my wife was talking at the time to 911 dispatch. And I said, he is dead. Saying that in the same way you might if the ice cream machine at McDonald's was broken. Polygraphs were done and they were found to be deceptive. Polygraphs are nonsense, no shit. But what they do is put more pressure on a suspect. And it seemed like this was not helping Roger and Pam's case at all. Police are releasing new evidence regarding the murder of former BYU professor Kay Mortensen. BYU Daily News reporter Ryan Fowler shows us what police are, show, are telling us now. Mortensen's uh, murder back in November shocked Utahns, and now months later, police are naming people of interest and releasing more information to the public. Basically, Roger and Pamela have provided statements that have been inconsistent uh, to basic, the, you know, the basic 911 call along with being inconsistent with the crime scene itself. Police are asking people to keep their ears open and to contact them with any information that they might have about this investigation. Thanks, Ryan. The pressure was growing. Roger and Pam hired lawyers. They stopped talking to the police, and the investigation continued. It continued until the following summer, in July 2010, when Roger and Pam were indicted by a grand jury, which is when evidence is presented to a jury to decide if they should be charged or not charged with a crime. The jury decided to charge Roger and Pam with the murder of Kay Mortensen. There was no evidence that anyone else was there, and Roger and Pam not looking great, in, fa in fact looking pretty gnarly. They both protested their innocence. In fact, Pam was offered a deal and she turned it down. She was so sure of her innocence. However, as the trial was ramping up for, for Roger and Pam, a call, a phone call, came in. A phone call which led to this conversation. I've just been blocking it out. Why did it happen? And I just watched the news and these people are going to go to jail. Prison, probably life sentence. Mm -hmm. They pulled out their guns and told him to put zip ties on. He said that he wasn't willing at first, but he eventually just said that they took him to the bathroom and bent him over the tub. He said that right after that they heard the door, the doorbell ring, and it was the two. Rachel said that her ex-husband, Martin Bond, and a friend of his, Benjamin Reddick, were the ones who went to Kay's house that day. She knew this because they told her. They told her everything. They were there for his guns. He knew that his wife was going home soon, and I think that's why he didn't put much of a, a, a struggle. He said that Ben, um, that Ben cut his throat and then stabbed him in the back of his neck. But I read in the news that he was in the five times, so I don't know. Martin told lied about it if Martin helped show him up. Um, either way, Martin is definitely more of the interest one of the two. They decided that it was just that they'd probably be safe to not kill him. I don't know what exactly was not. But they said that he said he came back and they both told them what story that they should tell the cops. If they didn't, then they would come back and kill them and their families and whatever else. They also have OCD, and so that's why you guys found absolutely no evidence for the OCD. So who the shit were Martin and Benjamin? Well, it turned out that Martin Bond, the ex-husband of this, this woman, was the son of a very close friend of Kay Mortensen's. Kay had known Martin since he was knee-high to a grasshopper. So Kay... Let him in. Come on in! You know? I'll put the coffee on. This wasn't a home invasion at all. This was a home welcoming. Kay had no guard up whatsoever. He didn't... Why would he need a music guns? He's known Martin since he was a... He was a baba. Baba. But of course, once inside, Martin and Benjamin, they tied Kay up. And they stole his guns. That's what they were there for. They then brought him upstairs and started sawing his throat open. They had driven there that day with those intentions, bringing a 40 caliber handgun, zip ties, and latex gloves. They knew Kay had a lot of guns and that they would be worth a good bit of money, so they knocked on his door. Kay welcomed him in once they were 
in his side his house though, they whipped out their own irons, demanding to be taken to his valuable guns. But Kay, being a sharp cookie that he was, he led them downstairs to the bunker, to his shitty guns that weren't worth much at all. Then, knowing that he had seen their face, they took him upstairs, they grabbed a butcher's knife from his own kitchen, and that was the end of Kay Mortensen. Just as they were finished with him, Roger and Pam showed up. Uh, Martin, he took the guns, he, he sold some, he kept some in his house, and he buried some others. Scott Free, of all of this, with Roger and Pam going, almost going on trial for it, until he was stupid enough, this fucking guy, to tell his ex-wife about what he did, bragging about it. And then she having a, her conscience hearing about what, you know, Roger and Pam were going through in the news all the time. She was like, I can't let this happen. So she did what she did. Roger and Pam were in jail, in prison for five months before they were set free. It's a long time. For more than a year, Utah County authorities had suspected Kay Mortensen's son and daughter-in-law in the murder of the retired BYU professor. Today, these two men were arrested for the crime as prosecutors dropped the charges against Roger and Pamela Mortensen to the delight of their attorneys. Their story now appears to be true as Martin Bond and Ben Reddick have been arrested for the crime. This tip that uh, that ultimately came in was the key piece of information that we did not have, that ultimately we were able to confirm. Bond is believed to have known Kay Mortensen through his father and had been to the house before. It's believed the motive for the killing was Mortensen's extensive firearm collection. Detectives recovered 20 of the stolen guns near Vernal. We have always made the statement that if we could find the weapons, then we would know the story. While authorities are clearly embarrassed in the mistaken prosecution of the Mortensons, they insist they never gave up on following other leads in the investigation. Roger's brain injury helped indict him. He failed a polygraph because of that. Pam got details wrong because it was a stressful situation and that's why things were off. And why the phone call was weird, they weren't sure to tell the real story or the killer's story. When questioned, Martin, initially, he denied the story. What you on about? until the police found some of Kay's guns in his house and he and Ben pointed the finger at each other saying the other one killed Kay while they watched. This was an orchestrated event. Ben could not orchestrate Coleman this damn hair. Ben made some random decisions and I tried to clean things and make them orderly as to avoid getting in trouble. It was Ben. Absolutely, 100%, it was Ben. Who cut his throat? It's Marty. Who cut his throat? It's Marty. Who cut it? It's Marty. Who? Marty. Marty who? I swear to God, Marty Bond. Um, they tentatively said hello. And uh, they just kind of walked in. And uh, at that point I said, this is uh, the, uh, um, wrong place, wrong time. And, um, they were obviously pretty shocked at that point. Roger cried a lot. And um, Pam was a little more calm. Um, she basically was just very agreeable, saying, we'll say anything you want us to say. Um, that kind of thing. Too much had been done already. Like, this, it was, I just didn't want anything more to happen. So, just said, Ben, you know, we're done, no more. This is it. Leave them be. I just threaten them, scare them, leave. It was a pretty deal for them. That, I mean, it sucks. You know, they were innocent and they were getting nailed for some sure. joke. They told what happened. As I said, saying the other murdered while they watched. But I should have stopped it, blah, blah, blah. They also cleared Roger and Pam completely. Though talking to one snitch in jail, Martin admitted he had killed Kay, but he had done it because Ben was pointing a gun at him. 23-year-old Ben Reddick agreed to plead guilty to the aggravated murder and aggravated kidnapping of Kay, and for that he was sentenced to 25 years to life. Martin pleaded not guilty, but was ultimately found to be so, and was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. Anything they could do to humiliate me, they did. It was terrible. Yeah. He and his wife were wrongly accused of killing his father. Today, Roger and Pamela Mortensen broke their silence about their ordeal of being arrested and intimidated by police when they were, in fact, themselves victims of a heinous crime. We were falsely incarcerated, and 
that we aren't the people that we were made out to be. They were at a loss as to what to do, and it was easier for them to blame us than to actually spend the time to look at who could be guilty. And so ends the story of Kay Mortensen, a story that it didn't end with his dad, it ended with his son and his son's wife being dragged through the entirety of the legal system and everybody believing that they had murdered their own dad when they were victims here too for almost a year. Pure shite, until amazingly and luckily enough, somebody called in, which wouldn't even have happened if Martin had been kind of, you know, stupid enough to say it to his ex-wife. I mean, if, if she hadn't called, would Martin, or would um, Pam and Roger be in prison to this very day? Kind of makes you think about all the cases, you know, I've covered. You kind of got to wonder, are some of these bad guys, like, not bad guys at all? They shouldn't actually, like, they're innocent, and the real killer is out there amongst us, maybe be standing behind you right now, maybe even watching this old video? <gasps> Who knows? But, I mean, the police are really ready to get Roger and Pam, and... But, I mean, at least they got the right guys by themselves. But, well, the, the, the right guys, meaning the bad guys, kind of got got by themselves, so the police didn't actually go get. This is all dumb shit. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you watching this old video with Misha. Um, yeah, a wild case of framing other people, and, well, it's an interesting one. It's one we've seen a couple of times, but it always never ceases to amaze me, because you always gotta wonder, well, if that was me? Not that it would be me. Will it be me? Who knows? I never know. But anyways, please check out some more of my videos if you want to see more of that chapter stuff. Also, uh, check out the That Chapter podcast, which you can find on your Spotify, on your iTunes, on all podcast platforms. Also, you can check out uh, the That Chapter podcast on YouTube now. It's a little bit behind the other po podcast platforms, but you can check it out if you're looking for it on YouTube. But until the next one, which will be like, you know, next video will be uh, next week on Tuesdays. Every new video every Tuesday, new podcast every Monday and Friday. Until you see me, or you hear me, please take care of each other and yourselves, because I love you. Mike out.